This is Neil Schneider for MTBS TV at CES 2012. We're in DDD's private suite, and uh, we're we're going to hear about some new stuff today. So, welcome to the program, gentlemen. To my immediate right is Chris Udall, CEO of Dynamic Digital Digital Depth, excuse me, DDD, as well as Larry Larry Wong, Vice President of Business Development. Thank you both for joining us. You're very welcome. Glad to be here. Now let's let's talk about 3D. I mean, we've uh, we've interviewed you before, of course, and each year there's always new and exciting developments. For those who are not familiar, maybe you could tell us a little bit about DDD, what you guys do. Sure, it's our favorite subject. So, uh, DDD develops a, a technology which is in lots of televisions, Blu-ray players, PCs, and mobile phones, which is called TriDef, and it converts. 2D content into 3D automatically. Now obviously one of the big challenges that we've got today in the 3D market is when I buy my PC, when I buy my television, what am I going to watch? And TriDef's automatic conversion capability means you can watch your favorite TV shows in 3D, your favorite games in 3D, your favorite photos in 3D, even though they're not specially made that way. So that's DDD's core business and our customers are Samsung, LG, Intel, AMD. Our business has grown very dramatically throughout the course of 2011 to the point where now over a million devices every month are built and shipped with TriDef technology inside. Can you tell us a little bit more about the TriDef software? Like, What are the core features of, of TriDef? Sure, we have different packages of our TriDef technology for different products, so it's a, a, a chip that goes inside the TV uh, if you're using a television for the PC marketplace. Um, there are really two functions, two discrete functions that we deliver for our customers. One is the ability to convert games from 2D to 3D, and it's not really game conversion. It's actually game rendering. The 3D information is in the game. It's normally just discarded and thrown away when you're playing the game with a normal two-dimensional display. What we're able to do is capture that information and then use the information about 3D that's in the game to turn the information that's going into the graphics card into stereoscopic 3D so that it can be watched on all the latest displays, the shutter glasses displays, the polarized displays, even the latest glasses free displays like this Sony laptop here that was recently introduced in Japan that gives you 3D without the need to wear the glasses. Excellent. Well, Larry, I, I take it you work with a lot of DDD's clients directly. Uh, I know Chris mentioned a whole slew of companies that are, are taking advantage of, of TriDef software. Maybe you could elaborate a bit more on some of the models or some of the products out there that are using DDD software? Right. Well, some of the latest developments that Chris alluded to just earlier that we're really excited about in 2011, one for, for sure is Sony, which started to ship. Uh, they're going to be shipping over a million uh, of their VIO notebooks with our TriDef software pre-installed. Now, what we have here in the demo is the um, S-Series VIO, but Sony's also announced that they will include TriDef not only in the S-Series, but also in the C, Z, uh, and E-Series. So most of the VIO notebooks will be shipping pre-installed with TriDef. And what's very interesting about it is that the VIO notebook, as everyone knows, is a 2D notebook but it's going to be enabled with our 3D software. And that means that Sony uh, uh, VIO notebooks will be able to um, output 3, 3D imaging to 3D displays, 3D monitors, and of course Sony 3D TVs. So we're very excited about that. I'm not sure I fully understand. So uh, like this, the, the notebook itself is a two-dimensional product or a 2D product. How does it get become 3D enabled? That's right, Neil. So the VIO series is a 2D notebook. What Sony's done is it's actually very clever. They are shipping uh, an optional lenticular attachment that you can just clip on to the VIO notebook and convert it from 2D to 3D. And Sony's thinking is very simple. They, what they, they're thinking is that 80 to 90 percent of the time users were, will continue to use the notebook as in its 2D native format. But for those times they want to see 3D photos, 3D games, or play uh, 3D videos, they will then attach lenticular, which just takes a matter of a few seconds, and connect it through their HDMI 1.4 and see it spectacularly on the large format displays and TVs that they sell and sometimes bundle along with the notebook. Does it require any type of face tracking, any any special additions like that? Yes, yeah, so one of the reasons why it works so well is that it does use the latest face and eye tracking technology. 
so that uh, when the user sits in front of the notebook, even if the head moves slightly from left to right, it's tr it tracks and outputs the 3D image correctly uh, uh, to coincide with the position of the user's head. Excellent. Now, Sony is, is one sample company. I, I gather LG is another. Can you elaborate a bit more as to what you're doing with LG? Well, we have a range of products with LG. Uh, obviously, their polarized displays uh, are very, very popular using the LG FPR passive polarized technology. LG also has, uh, in the Korean marketplace, an eye-tracked glasses-free 3D display that's very similar to the Sony system. Um, so the, the work that we've been doing with LG is helping them expand their markets in uh, Korea and also very importantly the market in China. Uh, we obviously focus very much uh, here in the North American continent on what's going on for games here in the United States. But in China there are 144,000 internet cafes and in each of those internet cafes is anywhere between 100 and 1,000 PCs where the Chinese uh, children and young adults are going to play games either locally or online against each other because they don't have the same access to broadband internet connectivity in the home that we do here in North America or Europe. And that represents about 14 million PCs. And obviously our customers like LG, AOC, um, Lenovo are very, very interested in selling some of their new 3D monitors into this big install base of iCafes where people can go and play games in 3D, watch their Blu-rays and movies in 3D. So this is a, a growth market and one that DDD over the course of the last uh, latter part of 2011 has put a lot of focus into in terms of making our games available that are Chinese so that we're not trying to promote uh, Western games in a country that uh, you know wants to play its own local Chinese games in 3D. And it's a very exciting idea because if people are going to these 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 cafes to play their games and they're enjoying the 3D experience where they may not have have wanted to try it on their own dollar first and try it out and see the benefits, they could indeed go ahead and buy 3D displays for their home as well. Yes, this is a great way of creating that awareness about the fun aspects. Um, LG has done a lot of market research in malls and some of these eye cafes over the course of the last few months and found that um, the Chinese consumer is very, very intrigued about 3D. They think it's a very cool, or as the Chinese have put it, a very hot new technology. And uh, this is a great way of creating that awareness so that as the price of the monitors continues to come down, and that's what we're seeing in the marketplace, we're not, uh, we don't have such a significant premium today for the 3D displays, the 3D notebooks that we did 12 months ago that the consumer can say, well, I want to take that home now and I want to buy my Lenovo laptop or my Lenovo all-in-one PC and use it at home. Excellent. Now, actually, I think we have an LG display here. We'll get a still shot of it. Maybe you could describe the specs, what, what makes this, this display unique. So uh, this is a passive polarized display that uses LG's new FPR, that stands for F Film Pattern Retarder Technology. And it uses those uh, very nice, very cool, lightweight, uh, passive polarized glasses. Um, this particular di monitor is a 24-inch format and is um, actually, uh, in addition to LG, uh, we have partners such as ViewSonic um, and also uh, um, AOC that have also come out with new FPR type of uh, monitors and they are doing very well in the marketplace. Uh, toward the end of 2011, you know, we seen many orders for this type of, uh, of this monitor, especially over the holiday season. Excellent. Uh, you know, on the topic of the software itself, the TriDef software, uh, what we do at MTBS is we have a service called Game Grade 3D, which we in use to independently test different solutions like DDD and, and, you know, the green team and the other solutions as well, like native options like AMD, for example, has HD 3D, which is a native uh, solution for making games work in 3D. And I, I know that, you know, for the DDD games that are tested, very often the results are, are quite good. I mean, they could earn like gold A to platinum. A scores, and I was wondering if you could elaborate a bit as to what DDD goes through to, to make games work in 3D to get positive results. Well, along with the growth in our customers, we've added a lot of new staff to the company, particularly in our research and development operation in Australia. And one of the groups that we put together within the last six months has been a game testing group. So this is a group of uh, staff whose sole job it is to take new games, whether they're North American games, European games, Chinese, Japanese, Korean games, 
and test them to make sure that we've got the best profile to make that game run in 3D. We do it a little differently from some of the other companies out there, like the uh, NVIDIA 3D Vision. We actually uh, take the, the process of re-rendering a game in 3D and look at it as an artificial intelligence challenge. We have to understand what the game is trying to do and make sure that as it goes through the rendering process, all the parts of the screen end up in the right place. We have a few other features that give a little bit more flexibility so the game player can choose the amount of 3D that they want. It's not a, here's what you get and that's all that you can you know, do. We also have some unique features uh, that we test against, like our Power 3D format. So uh, as the price of 3D laptops, 3D notebooks, uh, 3D monitors continues to come down, and we see the Ultrabooks, the new trend in PCs coming into the market with very thin, mobile, very power-sensitive uh, processors, we need to be able to produce a solution for that that gives you stereo 3D, but more uh, efficiently, without draining your battery as quickly, but still gives you a great high-quality 3D experience. So the testers are looking at Chinese games, Korean games, Western games, uh, making sure our profiles are correct. Right now we have a group of engineers in Beijing who are testing about 400 Chinese online games. We've even had to replicate an iCafe setup so that we can do all the testing that you would see in an iCafe where the games are located on a server, not locally on your PC. So there's quite an investment that we've made in testing and it's really to help our customers drive sales of their monitors into these emerging markets for 3D. Now, for a game developer, uh, I mean, in this case, in, in more, I, what I gather is what the TriDef driver does or the DD drivers do is it extrapolates a left-right view based on the volumetric 3D information stored in the game. Um, and, you know, more often than not, you get a very good result. Uh, is DDD doing things or are there some developments in the works to make it even easier for game developers to put out good content? Yes, part of our roadmap is to start to make some of the core capabilities of TriDef available to the game developers. And we really see uh, three discrete levels of capability. The, the technology that we've got today, the driver, is very simple to use if you're a game publisher or a developer. You don't need to do anything. DDD takes care of all that for you. The next level of integration is where you want to put native stereo support into your game. You want it to be were able to work with all the graphics processors, including the integrated processors from Intel. And that effectively gives um, a very simple and easy way for a game developer to integrate the core components of the TriDef. And our driver profile still takes care of all the complexities of understanding what the game is trying to do. The third stage is where we have a very sophisticated game developer who says, you know what, I've got a team of engineers who really understand stereoscopic 3D, and I want to be able to control the 3D effect. I want to be able to integrate all the features that TriDef has in its driver into my game natively. That's the most advanced level of integration. And you'll see us uh, introduce this product uh, throughout the course of 2012. And in fact, we've had a very good response from some of the game publishers that we've worked with uh, to, the, to this concept, simply because they've tried Stereo 3D. And they've discovered that it's not as easy as it looks. And they need to spend their time making their games look really good, making the storylines compelling, the gameplay fun, and leave the complexities and nuances of stereoscopic 3D to a, a, a software developer's kit that makes it very easy for them to get a high quality result in 3D in front of their customers. Excellent. Now, do you have any hardware recommendations to, to maximize the compatibility with DDD and to, you know, to get like full resolution and, and, and maximum performance when it comes to using DDD drivers? I think um, because of the way that the, the 3D display market has segmented, the resolution of the game is really going to be a direct factor of what type of display technology you're using. So film pattern retarders uh, take both the left and right, Im right images and put them together at the same time on the screen in the alternate lines of the picture. So you're not getting a full resolution uh, picture for each eye to look at, but the brain does a phenomenal job of uh, putting those two together and giving you a very high quality image. Uh, for the shutter glasses displays, um, clearly we can run the game uh, in its native 3D mode. We can render out a full left and right image if you've got a display technology like that. So the, 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 the features are in the software for you to drive it uh, the display technology in whatever way you want. And it's really dictated by the Lenovo's and the ViewSonic's and the LG's of the world as to what 
experience you're going to get visually on the screen. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you both for, for joining us. Uh, you, this is Neil Schneider for MTBS-TV at CES 2012 at DDD's Private Suite. Thanks for watching.